I now want to return to the idea of complete weightlessness. And I want to remind you a few lectures ago how I was swinging you at the end of a string in the vertical. I was swinging you like this. And I was swinging a bucket of water like this. And I want to return to that. I want to look at you when you are at the bottom of your circle and when you are at the very top of that circle. You go around a circle which has radius r. Here is that circle. There's a string here, you're here, and there's a string here, and at some point in time you're there, and you're going around. Let's assume that you're going around with an angular velocity omega, and for simplicity we keep omega constant. But that's really not that important. Okay, this is point P, and this is point S. Let's first look at the situation at point P. You have a mass, and so gravity acts upon you, mg. There is tension in the string, T. There must be, this is non-negotiable, a centripetal acceleration upwards. Otherwise, you could never do this. Remember from the uniform circular motion. So there must be here a centripetal acceleration, which is omega squared r, or if you prefer, v squared divided by r, if v is the speed, tangential speed at that point. It must be there. Let's look here. Right there, gravity is acting upon you, mg. Let's assume the string is pulling on you. Let's assume that for now. So there is a tension. String is pulling on you. Therefore, non-negotiable when you make this curvature here, there must be a centripetal acceleration, and that centripetal acceleration must be omega squared r. That is non-negotiable. It has to be there. Let's now evaluate first the situation at p. And I will call this plus, and I'll call this minus. So what I get now is that T minus mg must be m times the centripetal acceleration. So T must be m times the centripetal acceleration plus g. Hey, that looks very familiar. It looks like someone is being, someone is being accelerated in an elevator almost the same equation. If the centripetal acceleration at this point, for instance, were 10 meters per second squared, then you would weigh twice your normal weight. The tension here would be twice mg. If this were 5 meters per second squared, then you would be one and a half times your weight. Let's now look at the situation at S. At point S, I'm going to call this plus and that minus. I'm going to find that T plus mg must be m times the centripetal acceleration, Newton's second law. So I find that the tension there equals m times A of C minus G. Hey, very similar to what I've seen before. This object is losing weight. Let us take the situation that A of C is exactly 10 meters per second squared. And we discussed that last time when we had the bucket of water in our hands. If A of C, if the centripetal acceleration, when it, makes, when it goes through the top, is 10, then this is zero. So the string has no tension. The string goes limp. And the bucket of water and you are weightless. If the centripetal acceleration is larger than 10, then, of course, the string will be tight. There will be a force on you. And whatever comes out of here will indicate your weight. If 
a of c is smaller than 10, that's meaningless. The tension can never be negative. A string with negative tension has no physical meaning. What it means is that the bucket of water would never have made it to this point. If you try to swing it up, as someone tried in the second lecture, but didn't make it to that point, the bucket of water will just fall. And you end up with a mess, but that's a detail. So, the bucket of water, when it is here, if the acceleration there, the centripetal acceleration, were exactly 10 meters per second squared, then that bucket of water would be weightless. 